So I just bought the cheapest Cayman GTS in the country. And as soon as I got it off the trailer, I kind of realized that this was probably a little bit of a mistake. So I ended up picking this thing up from Copart. I was kind of looking around for my next project. I just finished up my Lamborghini and I wanted something really cool. I've got a Porsche Macan for a daily driver and I really wanted either a GT3 or GT4. And looking back on things, I really should have bought this GT3 Porsche 911. It was so sick, it was missing a rear wheel, but I just stopped bidding and didn't get that, that one. And after getting this car off the trailer though, this is a prime example why you should always check these cars out in person. And there's kind of a reason we started out in the interior because the interior on this one looks so sick. But going to the outside is where we realized that we probably paid a little bit too much money for this car. So yeah, just quickly kind of looking at the interior, I did really want the manual transmission. The interior on this thing looks awesome. And the only flaw that we've found so far with the interior is this seatbelt's locked up right now? And then on this driver door, we've got some scuffs right here. But for the most part, the interior is in mint condition. All right, so one thing that we did know in the pictures is that this front was pretty messed up and it's all gravy. We thought everything was gonna be good. And then there's kind of a couple things that we overlooked when we were originally bidding, like this fender right here. So one thing that we kind of messed up on a little bit is the fact that this fender got into the headlight right in here, all along here. That's not gonna be a cheap headlight whatsoever. Coming on over to this side, this fender does not line up whatsoever. So that's gonna be quite a bit of an issue hopefully the fender lines up once we get a new one on it but hopefully there's not any structural movement or anything like that another thing we kind of overlooked was this broken side skirt it was definitely in the pictures but just didn't look at things like that and now welcome to the part that we really messed up on so we didn't really notice this until after we had actually already bought the car that this left rear wheel is kind of kicked in a little bit and probably the biggest thing that we messed up on with this car is the fact that there's a dent right here on the rear quarter panel and all this is misaligned. So I actually had thought that the hit was probably low enough on this car that it avoided this quarter panel. But with the rear wheel being the way it is and the quarter panel dented, I'm thinking that frame rail might be just a little bit bent. So we might have some exciting bullshit to deal with. So one cool thing about this, when it was listed at auction, they actually had it just listed as a 718 Cayman S, but it's actually a GTS. So hopefully that scared away some of the buyers, but you never know. We're definitely gonna have some work in with this rear wing. One of the main reasons that this is so fucked up is this rear trunk got pushed in. If you can guys can see that bracket back there, but the whole bracket to the rear wing got pushed in a little bit. So we're either gonna have to hook up a chain or something like that, or completely drill that out and replace it. We knew the exhaust was a little bit messed up. That's just something that we're gonna have to deal with. Yeah. This is another one we didn't see in the pictures. That tail light and the other tail light are both gonna have to be replaced. Just one of those things that we kind of overlooked when we were originally bidding on it. We fucked up. And welcome to the side that we thought everything was good until we checked it out. So we definitely thought this side was gonna be okay because it looks like it got hit in the back left and then the driver's side front. But for whatever reason, this fender is pushed way back. And then also the hood that we thought was okay has actually damaged the front fender as well as we don't even know what happened here. So two parts of the car that we really thought were gonna be in great shape turned out to not be in quite so great a shape. Now we move on to the exciting part. Copart has originally listed this as an engine start, but we've had a battery charger on it for the past day. And we're gonna check out and see if it starts. The moment of truth. Inspection light, something disabled. Refuel, PADM disabled, refuel, service required, zero PSI of oil pressure. Oh, wait a minute, what is going on? 
That is not good because we've had the charger on this thing for like an entire day. So I kind of had a feeling something like this was going to happen. I don't know if my battery charger is a little bit messed up or this battery is just junk. But we're hoping there's nothing wrong with the car. All right, now we hop in the better Porsche. This is how you should actually buy salvage cars. So I got this one as a theft recovery from Copart with like $27,000 in electrical damage. Only thing we did was make two keys, hop in it, drive it, zero issues for the past year and a half. All right, we got the new battery in. Looks at least a lot better in here. Go over here to the oil pressure. Make sure we got oil pressure when we start it up. Twenty-three psi. Okay. All right. I don't know if you guys heard that, but whenever we let go of the clutch. Something is not quite right. It went away. It fixed itself. What is going on? I really hope that wasn't either clutch or transmission issues because it like it made a really bad noise. But we've got tire pressure, check engine. Something's freaking out over here. We can't run it for too long because there's no coolant in here, but I think the airbag light is from that passenger seat belt right over there. It's kind of ticking a little bit too. I don't know if that's how these are supposed to sound. But at least we have somewhat of an engine that drives and doesn't knock. But we don't know if we have a transmission yet. We probably need to jack it up and kind of see what we can do from here. All right, so both the windows work. Mirrors don't work. Mirrors work. Sick. All right, so now we've got the moment of truth. Because for whatever reason, Copart did not list this as a run and drive, just as a start. So I have a feeling that we're going to run into some really awful noises as soon as we try to drive this thing. noise is back. All right, so it's definitely not moving under its own power. So shout out Copart, you guys were right. Unfortunate for me, hopefully it's not a transmission. Sounds like maybe there's some axle noise or a blown out transmission, but we're gonna find out here in a second. Up, oh, I see the issue, I think, maybe. So we didn't quite have to put it up on jack stands to find out somewhat of the issue. It looks like maybe there's a broken axle, at least. Hopefully it did not blow out the side of the transmission. This is why you should always inspect your cars before you buy them. 
not only is every body panel damaged on this thing, but now we possibly also have a broken transmission. <laughs> but it'll be okay. We're going to have fun doing it. We're going to have fun rebuilding it. Paid way too much money for it, but that's okay. All right, so I'm really, really hoping that it's possibly just an axle and Porsche is so advanced with their electronics that it's like maybe, possibly just not letting it drive because of a broken axle. A transmission would be awful to replace, but should be all right. We're going to have fun rebuilding it. Whether it needs a transmission or not, we're going to have fun. And uh, we're going to push it down the hill a little bit, get it on some jack stands, and hopefully we can't uh, figure this out today. All right, so we're trying to put the tow hook in hoping that this bumper is just a little bit misaligned and not the frame rail because it doesn't line up at all. So we got our handy dandy pliers. We're gonna make room. It's pretty far out of order. All right, so we got it pushed back to the backyard and I think we came up with another issue. As soon as we pulled it in here, brand new battery fully charged and we don't got nothing. So there's probably some sort of electrical issue going on. And if you guys don't follow me on Instagram at all, this is the Lamborghini that I rebuilt. It was T-boned pretty bad, like right over in here. We went ahead and replaced the door, the quarter panel. It was a pretty easy project. Powder coated the wheels, but it was a fun project and it's finished for sale if you know anybody looking. But now we've got this piece of shit to work on. Here was the Lamborghini door before we fixed it. Shout out can side wheels for the ultimate jack stands. Ah. All right, time to see how bad it is. Looks like this side is fine, which is a little bit worrying. Doesn't really look too bad under here. Now for this side. Yeah, that axle's trashed. It doesn't look like it's leaking any transmission fluid or anything, which is good. This thing, I can't tell if that's bent or not. Oh, we got frame damage right there, right on the subframe. So I think we found out why that wheel is a little bit pushed in. If you guys can see that, that frame rail, is uh it's definitely shifted maybe a little bit doesn't look like too bad i think we can pull it out but definitely a little bit damaged but i still don't know why the transmission is not working because it does look like there's any fluid leaking i think that's just from the axle boot it's cracked there and threw grease everywhere the rest of the undercarriage of the car looks like minty which is kind of surprising because most of the time they mess them up pretty good with the forklift, but the undercarriage looks pretty pretty good under this car other than this back left corner which hopefully we can pull that out all the control arms look straight. So that's why I think it might just be that frame rail up there has moved just a little bit. All right, so we've definitely got our work cut out for us on this one. One thing that I usually get from the Copart auctions is I can usually like kind of search the car and see the prior owner's contact information or an old receipt, insurance card, something like that, and kind of call them and ask them what happened. Unfortunately, we're not able to find that on this car. It was like completely cleaned out. It is what it is. I would love to find out what was possibly going on with the transmission, axle, something like that, because that is probably the scariest part about this project is that could instantly add 10k or more to fix this car which we're not looking forward to we kind of got rained out for today so tomorrow we're probably going to start tearing down the car 
order some parts, give you guys more of a breakdown of how much we actually paid for this car and also how much it's gonna cost in parts to fix this thing. But regardless, this is probably gonna be one of the hardest salvage projects I've ever had to do. That frame damage is definitely not in a good spot at all. I've got a really good frame shop here locally, but regardless, it's gonna be definitely a project. It's gonna take a little bit more amount of time. I think I fixed the Lamborghini in like three weeks, so it was like almost too quick to be any fun. But if you guys don't follow me on Instagram at all, it's anthony.gocker on Instagram. I post a lot more updates on there with, with my project cars than I do on YouTube. But if you guys like these YouTube videos, I'll keep posting them. But anyway, let me know what you guys think about this project down below in the comments. If there's any suggestions or anything like that with this build, how much we're gonna possibly be in it, definitely let me know. All right, time to get into the goodies. How much do we actually pay for the car? So we ended up winning the bid from Copart for 23,000. But if you guys have ever bought a car from Copart before, you still know that there's all the auction fees and broker fees, and we ended up having $3,200 worth of that. But that also brings us into our next cost. We've got transportation fees. So I bought this car out of Miami. I'm located in Kansas City. We ended up getting a really good deal on the transporting fees, but it was still $1,120. And let me start by saying I was incredibly happy about the purchase price of this car because the closest clean title equivalent that I could find was around $70,000. But that was before we found out about the frame damage and the possible transmission. So I did go ahead and order one part, which is the driver rear axle, and that was $486. So that brings us to a grand total exactly how it sits right now to $27,806. I'm a little bit hesitant about having to replace the transmission. I've only found one in the country for sale right now. It's $7,500 before shipping. So I'm really hoping whatever issue is going on back there, we can figure it out, possibly repair the transmission. Hopefully the axle has something to do with why it's acting funky. But that's all the parts we're gonna order for this video. If you guys did like this video, you wanna stay along for the build, make sure to leave me a comment, let me know. Next video, I'm gonna go over some of the parts we're gonna order. We are gonna get a GT4 front body kit for this car because it looks so much better. It's not too much more money. But I'll kind of go over like a full breakdown of exactly how much all the parts cost, exactly how much the bodywork, paint, things like that cost as we go. And please say a prayer for me that we can fix this transmission and not have to spend like 8K on getting a new one. But if you guys don't follow my Instagram, it's anthony.gocker. I do post a little bit more updates on there as well. But leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys thought of this video. 